Welcome to I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom from Dollar Shave Club, where we explain something very complicated in mere minutes to occupy your brain while you shave. In this edition, we'll be exploring everything that happens to your body on an airplane, as explained by someone who sounds smart because he's British. Absolutely nothing about humans flying is natural, and since we've only been doing it for a little more than a hundred years, our bodies are nowhere close to adapting to the very particular set of stresses we put on them each time we crack open our fourth miniature at 39,000 feet. So let's talk about what that pressurized, bio-scented environment is doing to us. Okay, let's start at the top and work down. Why do my ears feel like they're going to implode? To understand why your ears pop during a flight, it helps to understand something called Boyle's Law. In a nutshell, as pressure decreases, the volume of a gas increases. This includes the air in your middle ear, which expands uncomfortably as the pressure in the cabin drops. The popping you experience is the pressure equalizing between your ear and the cabin. You can experience this relief more quickly by chewing gum, since the motion made by the jaw when chewing helps to open up this passageway, releasing the air faster. I couldn't hear anything you just said, but I'm going to assume the answer was gremlins. Oh, that's better. Hey, why do I always get sick when I fly? (laughs) Despite most people believing it's recycled airplane air that gets you sick, this isn't the case. The air in the cabin is drawn in from outside through the engines and is completely refreshed 20 times an hour, considerably more frequently than your average office building. The real reason we get sick is all those shared surfaces, tray tables, bathroom door handles, etc., that are crawling with a swarming mass of everyone else's germs. So when you fly, carry hand sanitizer. And what about gas? Every time I fly, it feels like someone's inflating my colon with a bicycle pump. Boyle's law rears its head once again, only this time it's applying its gas-expanding principles to your bowels. The gut, as you know, contains a lot of gas, all of which increases in size at altitude. This, in turn, makes you feel bloated. If your seatmate is chugging a can of soda on takeoff, know that you'll likely be smelling their gas for the rest of the flight. Gross. Talking of which, why does my butt go numb on long flights? That's caused by the fact that blood and fluids tend to slow down during a flight, which can result in numbness and stiffness. Things are worse for your legs, which are at increased risk of deep vein thrombosis, that is, the formation of blood clots in deep veins. This is partly just from sitting down for so long, which causes the blood to pool in your legs, but also, if you're either very short or very tall, the veins behind your knees can get kinked, further decreasing blood flow. So, what can I do about this stuff? Besides stretching your legs with a walk to the bathroom now and again, not much. But in most cases, the problems tend to be both minor and short term. So your best bet is just to grit your teeth and try to fall asleep. Fair enough. At least there's no little demon child behind me kicking the back of my... No! Tune in next time for more I Learned a Thing in the Bathroom. And in the meantime, head to DollarShaveClub.com for more podcasts and a big old pile of grooming products.